good, bro? How you, bro? You all right? Yeah, shout out to you, bro. Always keeping it real, you know? Keeping the people woke. You know? Might as well add on to that real quick. A little something for you and your, and your um, viewers. You know, since they just been uh, keeping it a hundred. Y'all saw, let me ask you something. They be claiming they apes. If they really gorillas then, how come Zimmerman still walking around and they none of them get at them? Separation is reparations in this affirmation. Case closed, no investigation. It is what it is, no explanation. Y'all over here praying like y'all gonna be saved. We ain't one in the same. You a field nigga, he a house nigga. Me, I'm a runaway slave. I'd rather be under a grave than under a man that come from a cave. So I'm off to get guns and grenades, but I'll be back in a couple of days. Yeah, I'm on my Django, like Jamie Foxx. Sharp shooter when I aim these shots. They like, here come the pigs, and I'm like, good. Cause I came for the cops I bang with my opposition Hip-hop's been glitching since Pac's been missing That's why none of y'all got my attention It's repetition, I ain't gotta listen Cause I already know what it is Your flow gon' be flowing like his Talking about how you're ruling the bands I know how it starts and I know how it ends Wait, ain't you married? Why you rapping about all the hoes you got? And the clothes you rock with You need to stop These nigga, those ain't hot Man, y'all tripping Got these Chinese niggas frying y'all chicken I don't even look like chicken. Fuck around and it's probably a pigeon. God forgive them. They don't know no better. They probably a Christian, a Muslim, a hoodlum. To the system, there's no difference. I don't understand it. How you blacker than me talking about you Hispanic? Spanish a language. We the same issue your mind's been damaged. Where this Nadie? Puta flipiando. I'm from the Kanye. They coon it like Kanye. But I'm on that shit they don't teach you in John Jay. I'm criminal minded. You can tell I'm a dawn by the women I ain't with. I maneuver like Heimlich. But the pressure on the stomach come from my nine inch. I probably ain't catching. So be blind, then that part is highly suggested. I'm possessed because my women possessive. I'm blessed, and this is a blessing. You niggas gonna learn today. This is a lesson. Go in the church, ain't gonna get you in heaven. Nigga, your rabbin's a felony. Taking your money and swelling your melon. Me, yeah, I'm a rebel, that's why I'm rebelling. Somebody gotta say it, so I'ma tell them. Had knowledge yourself since I was 11 and 12. My son by the time he was seven I'm the best man, though I'm not at your wedding I help them get on, they ain't gotta get credit I'm tipsy, off a of nipsy I'm a hustle, until I get it I see where y'all going, that's not where I'm headed I'm taking a different direction, so no We can't do a record, and just for the record I actually feel disrespected, but you even think it I would be shaking, down in your level Clown, you a pebble, trying to smell What the rock is cooking, cause you heard I said I'm shop in Brooklyn, but it's still BX to the death of me, they got ingredients I got the recipe, I hope you die in your sleep that goes for all my foes that ever slept on me, niggas. They go. <laughs> I don't give a fuck what you niggas want to hear. This what the fuck you need to hear. <laughs> Stay woke. Huh? I said, no time for sleeping. The enemy creeping, and we can't defeat them unless we stay woke. No time for sleeping. The enemy creeping. And we can't defeat them unless we stay woke. Hmm? We can't defeat them unless we separate ourselves from ourselves. Because there's a war going on outside. No man is safe from. We ain't safe from them. And we ain't safe from us. CMB. CMB. We all we got. Am I my brother's keeper? What that nigga G Money tell Nino? The world is mine. Everything is all mine. Even my bitch. What that foul ass nigga Nino Brown tell him? Oh, you crying over that bitch? You gonna let a bitch come between us? Backs out that 357 and hit him in the head headshot. And then what the Nino Brown do? Soon as he left G Money's dead body laying on the floor, he went back to his crib and was laying right up with G Money's bitch. This is why I tell y'all, pay attention to your circle before they hurt you. 
Because they smile in your face. All the while, they want to take your place. The backstabbers. You have entered the house of Hassan Campbell, Team Poppy. Hmm? When you come in this bitch, you look over there, you see that like button, you start hitting that. You hit that like button. You show some respect. Take your shoes off when you come in my house. Village. Man, I hate sexy red. Real rap. Peace and blessings. Love, Hassan. Monty 312. Been waiting for this. Shall we begin? Sexy Red, being that you brought up Sexy Red in the comment section. So, the reason why you got Sexy Red's name in my title is because Sexy Red and Megan Thee Stallion, well, let's start with Sexy Red. She has a weed strain representing Plan B, right? AKA abortions. Plan B, AKA abortions. And Megan Thee Stallion, I'll let this brother break it, break it down. You ready for your overdose of irony? Megan Thee Stallion, a so-called rapper, received the Catalyst of Change Award from Planned Parenthood a company that was started to eradicate black folks just like her, whose founder said, we don't want the word to get out that we want to exterminate the Negro population. Now, I don't like to use the word retarded, but give me a follow. So, let me get this straight. On one side, you got Megan Thee Stallion running around receiving awards from Planned Parenthood. Anybody that knows the history, he just broke the history down. Planned Parenthood is an organization that promised to put the lights out of our DNA. Planned Parenthood was designed and created to bring an end of us as a people. Then you got Sexy Ray that's coming out with a weed strain. A weed strain. Called Plan B. Do y'all not see the military mind games? The energy, the spells, the evil being cast on our children. That's why no matter what anybody say, none of my friends, nobody will ever be able to convince me to be cool with this industry or anybody affiliated with this industry, anybody that's part of this industry, because this industry is evil. It's evil. Ain't no other ways around it. It's evil. But it's sad though, because love has been taken away from the black community. We have been conditioned to hate each other so bad. Like, there was a time when a man and a woman laid down with each other and the most beautiful thing that came out of having sex was your child. See, with age comes wisdom. With age comes wisdom. And as you get older and you travel on a spiritual journey, you'll find yourself getting to the point to where that, not all of us, the chosen ones, will the things that you would do yesterday, the people that you would have slept with yesterday, they don't live here anymore. 
having a baby is supposed to be something that's sacred. That's sacred. When you open up your legs to somebody and that person that you opened up your legs to, you got to run to the doctor to get a plan B the next day. You have to reevaluate your whole life in the decisions that you're making. Because if the nigga that you laying down with, that you laying in the bed, and I'm talking to you females, because this energy, this spell that's being cast through this music industry, that spell of plant B, the spell of these, the, like, even the energy of social media and what it represents and the aim and the goal to destroy the essence, the beauty, the beauty, the essence of a black woman. Shout out to all the black women out there that's holding firm, keeping their legs closed. Shout out to the black woman out there that's representing motherhood. Shout out to the black woman out there that's keeping their integrity on the internet. That's keeping their integrity, giving these young girls something to look up to, something to look at. As a father, as a brother, as a uncle, as a grandfather now, I have a granddaughter. Some of y'all females need to hear this. We don't want to see y'all running outside, or rather, like, as soon as it get hot, and the first thing you do is go outside dressed half naked. If I don't want to see my daughter like that, if I don't want to see my mother like that, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you females? Do y'all realize that there's still men with integrity here? There's still men with integrity. Put some pants on. Stop getting in the, in, on the internet in your panties. You're looking desperate. Somebody out there, one of you females, you need to hear this. I'm speaking from a brother. Don't no brother want to go outside and, and, and see his sister outside half-ass naked? And I damn sure don't want to log on to the internet and see my sister, my daughter, my mama in her panties. What nigga really want to put a baby in a bitch that's running around on the internet? And you got 100,000 likes from 100,000 dudes that got they pecker, they pecker got, they pecker got hard. Niggas people still stand up off of you. You on the end of, you on the internet dick teasing. As a father, do you think niggas want to see that? Of course niggas is in, a, in your DM because you on the internet looking thirsty. Looking for love on, in all the wrong places. You are on the internet looking for love. See, it's crazy because a parent could tell a child, right? Not to go outside. Because it's safe to say it ain't safe outside. But you people will put something on the internet that will travel across the world. You didn't even leave your house. All you did was took 15 to 20 seconds to post something on your goddamn, your, your, your timeline, on your platform, your social media, and every nigga across the world is sitting up there grabbing their crotch. They ain't looking at you sitting up there saying, I think I might wife her. No. They trying to put you in the camel clutch. The backbreaker. And then when they done, now you got to get up and you got to run and, and run to go get your plan B. Because in the mixed of you letting him come in your universe, your non-universe, 
in the midst of that, you done created a bastard. Or you trying not to create a bastard. But if it's like that, and you really got to get to the point to where that you don't want to bring this nigga's baby into this world, what the hell you doing with him in between your legs? Take the what? Then the crazy part about it is, some of you females, because I got a theory. I got a theory. Science is so advanced. Some of you people were going to abort your womb. And y'all don't even realize that their technology is so advanced now. They snatch to your, they're snatching your baby out of your womb and keeping it alive. You thinking that it's ending up in the garbage can. That's what they're telling you. In some cases, some of y'all don't even realize you have sacred blood. You have sacred blood. And I keep telling y'all, the people, these people, they've been studying your blood. Way back to what they call the, 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 the mother of civilization. They've been studying your blood, looking for the Messiah. Taking your placenta. Checking your placenta, studying your blood. And y'all run into Planned Parenthood. Y'all run into the abortion clinic and letting them up in you. What if I told half you chicks out there that had an abortion, that kid that you thought you killed, didn't end up in the toilet? That that kid might have end ended up in somebody's torture chamber. There's a list of things that I can say that I'm not. I always feel like Somebody's watching me. I got eyes on me. I'm going to leave it as that. Keep demolishing the agenda. David Banks, thank you for sponsoring this war. And with that being said, to everybody out here that's, that's supporting me, man, let me tell you something, man. My videos, I'm not being paid for these lives. So if y'all want me to keep going to laugh, y'all hit that cash app up, dollar sign Hassan Campbell. I don't care if you put $1. There's thousands of you watching. If all you have is $1 a year, I'm telling you to sponsor this war because I'm not going to stop saying the shit that I say out of my mouth. And when I go outside now, I got to have security when I go to certain places. When I move around certain places with my children, that's what y'all sponsoring this war for, to keep a nigga alive. I'm not going to stop talking. And when I go certain places, I got to be right or I'm going to get left. And that's the bottom line to that. So if y'all support me, nigga, it's thousands of people in here. Put a dollar in that cash app or put a dollar in the super chat. It doesn't even matter. But keep me afloat because a lot of people don't have the balls to do what I'm doing. It's me versus the industry. Remember that to the day that I die. See, Max, salute, highs. Thank you for sponsoring this war, family. Poppy's Little Princess. Hot Girl Summer's Canceled. Help the house, highs. Thank you, family. Appreciate you. JC, thank you for sponsoring this war. We're going to go in tonight. J. Steve. Haney Highs. <laughs> Nothing but greatness, Inc. Okay, what up, Kate? Thank you for sponsoring this war. It's a lot of things that I want to touch on. A whole lot of things that I want to touch on. To anybody, matter of fact, to everybody that's watching this live, right? For now on, what I want to do is for those of y'all that um that like my lives, when the live is over, what I want y'all to do is I want y'all to timestamp the live. And what portions of the live that y'all would want to see me re-upload. 
and put clips up. I'm going to start doing clips off of my live. So whatever y'all feel like, I need y'all to engage in this. Whatever y'all feel like is the best part of the live, I want y'all to let me know so I can let so I can take the clips, put the time mark inside the comment section after the live goes off. You put the time mark in there and let me know what the time stamp is and what the topic was, and I'll re-upload those clips for y'all. Ruben L. Haas, what you think of the rain in Dubai? Keep doing your thing always. Oh, we're going to get into that. Keith R. Never stop spreading the knowledge. The people need you. Salute, Haas. Malaysia Andrew Diggs. I just, um, I just said the same thing in my live this morning. And that's another thing too, especially to my own, to my own, my mods or the people that supporting me, I will be doing stream yards. I'm going to start doing more stream yards so y'all people could come up on my platform, especially if you already got platform. I'm looking to extend my hospitality to other platforms to help other platforms grow, you know, because it's a lot of dope content creators out there. That's not getting recognition. So we're going to start doing more stream yards as well. And that's a promise. I don't know where I want to start. There's so much that I want to talk about tonight. I don't even I don't even, I don't even know where I want to start. Matter of fact, let me see something. Let me see something. Let me see. Now, Haas, hey, New York owned preppers on YouTube is popping off. It's off in Iran. Oh, let me tell you something, man. We going we yo, we gonna get, we gonna get to it. It's a lot that I want to talk about. Now this brother right here, let me let me play him real quick, right? This brother right here that I'm about to play. Let me let him say what he got to say first. It's crazy you you um say that I was just educating my friends on how the ancient Egyptians have sperm cells written on stones. They definitely studying us. Hell yeah, they studying us. I'm going to tell you like this. I can't afford no slips. I can't afford no slips. I, I just lost my mom. I just buried my mother, man. I lost my emergency contact. I lost that one person I could call up and, and guarantee that she on deck. I don't have that no more. I don't have that luxury. I can't afford jail. I don't have nobody I could call up and, and, and say, yo, hey, hey, bro, hold my bills down for the next year while I'm sitting up fighting this, this, this case. I don't know nobody like that. I don't have that. You know what I'm saying? When you're a kid and you're going back and forth through trials and tribulations and all that, you ain't leaving nothing behind but your, a, a bedroom in your mother's house. Yeah, that's all you leave it behind. Just all you leave it behind. As an adult, you leaving bills, you leaving your own apartment, you leaving your children. You might come home and your, your mother might be dead, your father might die while you're in jail. All sorts of shit. You, I can't afford none of that no more. That part of it is over with. You know what I'm saying? I had I can't I had to leave. In order for me to still be here, I had to leave childish behavior in the past. That's done. I can't be making childish decisions. The same decisions and facing the same choices that I faced when I was 16, 17, 18. I'm not facing those choices no more. Nah. Nah, that's not what it is. I can't afford it. So when niggas called me up asking me to do dumb shit or get involved with dumb shit. Now, this dude right here, me and him done had some back and forths because of me attacking Dipset. Shooter 
let me say this to Shooter, right? This is the Shooter that I was looking for. We ain't got to be friends. We ain't got to be cool. But this is the Shooter that I was looking for. When you hear Lord Akim say, no time for sleeping. The enemy's creeping and we can't defeat him unless you stay woke. All these dudes is coming home from jail, glorifying jail. All of these dudes are on the internet. Like, when I look at China Brim, and I'm going to say this, right? Addressing China Brim, Harlem legend, in the 050 movement, right? I sit back and I watch. Y'all take dudes coming home from jail. They did 20-year bids. Everybody got bodies. Niggas is killers. Niggas that killed niggas in jail. Niggas that killed niggas in the street. Y'all put these brothers up. That's supposed to be your bloods. Your blood brothers. You put these brothers up on your platforms. Then you have them going at each other on the internet. Y'all know when these brothers bump heads in the street, they're going to kill each other. Y'all know that. But this is what the 050 movement do. And they call the shit, got the nerve to call the shit Digital Hollywood. You took your niggas that took an oath to be blood brothers together, bringing them on the streets. After getting out of jail, putting them on the internet and got them attacking each other, knowing that one day, this is a small world. They're going to bump heads in New York City and there's nothing to talk about. They done killed before and one of them going to kill again. One going to die, another one going to go back to jail, back to the message. He up, we up, bring it back, come rewind. I'm going to tell you like this. I can't afford no slips. I can't afford no slips. I, I just lost my mom. I just buried my mother, man. I lost my emergency contact. I lost that one person I could call up and, and guarantee that she on deck. I don't have that no more. I don't have that luxury. I can't afford jail. I don't have nobody I could call up and, and, and say, yo, hey, hey, bro, hold my bills down for the next year while I'm sitting up fighting this, this, this case. I don't know nobody like that. I don't have that. You know what I'm saying? When you're a kid and you're going back and forth through trials and tribulations and all that, you ain't leaving nothing behind but your, a, a bedroom in your mother's house. Yeah, that's all you leave it behind. Just all you leave it behind. As an adult, you leave it Bills, you leaving your own apartment, you leaving your children, you might come home and your, your mother might be dead, your father might die while you're in jail, all sorts of shit. You, I can't afford none of that no more. That part of it is over with. You know what I'm saying? I had, I can't, I had to leave. In order for me to still be here, I had to leave childish behavior in the past. That's done. I can't be making childish decisions. The same decisions and facing the same choices that I faced when I was 16, 17, 18. I'm not facing those choices no more. Nah, nah, that's not what it is. I can't afford it. So when niggas call me up asking me to do dumb shit or get involved with dumb shit. This is why I go so hard on the lobby boys. Because there's a method to my madness. This is why I went so hard on Jim Jones. It's not that I'm, I'm hating and I'm clout chasing. I got to sit back again. And I watched Jim Jones. I watched his son on a camping trip with white kids talking proper while our kids was going to the penitentiary. You send your kids to college and you send our children to an early grave? This is why I go so hard on the industry because the shit that Shooter just said out of his mouth. The shit that he said, you want me to break it down? Because some of y'all slow. So I'm going to slow this shit down because this shit that he said out of his mouth, it needed to be heard. Our children in the street is going to the penitentiary by the busload. By the busload. And see the crazy part about it is? There's a war going on outside. No man is safe from. We are on the break of World War III. They releasing niggas that selling weed, a little bit of drugs now. Because they making room for our soldiers. 
They make they're releasing niggas to get our soldiers. These niggas that's on the streets now, these old niggas coming home from jail, 40 and 50 years old, still on the block, they ain't got it in them to fight for us as a people. They are not they are not revolutionaries. These niggas is old washed up drug dealers, and some niggas is old washed up killers. When the shit hit the fan, and we got to deal with them border joke jumpers, and we got to deal with these racists that's waiting, that's waiting for civil war, that's been training for civil war because they want to take back their country and make America great again. Do you not understand that these sucker ass niggas that'll kill you in a minute? Because don't get it fucked up. They still kill you, but they ain't going to do nothing to protect us as a people. The penitentiary is making room for our soldiers and letting all these old school drug kingpins back on the streets. I'm going to tell you like this. I can't afford no slips. I can't afford no slips. I, I just lost my mom. I just buried my mother, man. I lost my emergency contact. I lost that one. The nigga said I lost my emergency contact. Your mother is your emergency contact forever, forever, ever, forever, ever. Your mother. Ain't nothing like a, her, your, your mother. I can call up and, and guarantee that she on deck. I don't have that no more. I don't have that luxury. I can't afford jail. I don't have nobody I could call up and, and, and say, yo, hey, hey, bro, hold my bills down for the next year while I'm sitting up fighting this, this, this case. I don't know nobody like that. I don't have that. You know what I'm saying? When you a kid and you going back and forth. The nigga said, I don't know nobody like that. I don't have that. So it's safe to say if he goes to jail, Jim Jones ain't, you know, the nigga that's balling. They're sitting up there acting like he's giving charity in Harlem. He's not going to pay this nigga rent while he in jail till he get home. Whatever his rent is, $2,000, $2,500, $3,000. Because Shooter look like a nigga that probably have a, a decent, he might have a decent apartment. A decent condo, a decent co-op. But he's telling you these niggas that's supposed to be his niggas, that's rich. That's fronting like they rich. They're not going to keep a roof over his head till he come back home. He done. This is what you young boys need to understand. And this is what y'all need to hear. When you go to jail, you buried alive. And that emergency contact? Because these bitches will break out on you. They'll break out on you. But your mother, she the one praying up at nighttime. She's the one praying for you at nighttime. She's the one rooting for you. She's the one sending the package. Through trials and tribulations and all that, you ain't leaving nothing behind but your a, a bedroom in your mother's house. Yeah, that's all you leaving behind. That's all you leaving behind. As an adult, you leaving bills, you leaving your own apartment, you leaving your children. You might come home and your, your mother might be dead. Your father might die while you're in jail. All sorts of shit. You, I can't afford none of that no more. That part of it is over with. You know what I'm saying? I had, I can't, I had to leave. In order for me to still be here, I had to leave childish behavior in the past. That's done. I can't be making childish decisions. The same decisions and facing the same choices that I faced when I was 16, 17, 18. I'm not facing those choices no more. Nah. Nah, that's not what it is. I can't afford it. So when niggas call me up asking me to do dumb shit or get involved with dumb shit. There's somebody out there that's watching me right now. I'm talking to you. When you have a child. See, niggas didn't tell me this. But I'm going to tell you this. When you have a child, you got a baby. Your family is the first line of defense. And sometimes your friends, they see you got a pretty girl, beautiful girl. 
Your teenage love. Gotham. Shout out to my nigga Gotham. He made a video earlier today that I watched. Well, I seen it earlier today. I don't know when he made it. But he's funny. He brings comedy to the table. And he was talking about how that was 20 years ago. Talking about dudes be talking about, oh, I was messing with her in junior high school. Gotham, I disagree, baby. Somebody tag Gotham. I disagree. You know why? Because it ain't nothing like that teenage love. That's your first love. And a lot of the times, these young boys, shorty, I'm talking to you. Your girl, she beautiful. She with all these grown men looking at. She's 7, 16, 17, 18 years old. You done got her pregnant. She loves you. You are her first love. She gave you your first child. Right now, you a daddy. You got friends that's envious of the way you interact with your child. Of the way your girl is waiting for you to come home at night. And your man's, he's going to create a beef in the streets. That's going to take you away from your kid forever, forever, ever, forever. Your man's is going to purposely start a beef. Because he know you got your back, his back. He hate this world. And not only do he hate this world, he hates your world. He's envious of the love and affection and attention that you have at home. You know, sometimes I got to make y'all feel where I'm coming from. YouTube might be mad at me tonight. So things I miss at home. Some things I miss at home. I'm going to act up tonight on this live right here. gotta play the whole song but i want y'all to feel me things that home home you got everything right now you don't have much you might not even have your own crib but you got your baby you got your baby mama she loving on you you loving on your kid and it be them niggas that smile in your face all the while they want to take your place back, the, them backstabbers they're going to take you from home. Niggas didn't tell me when I was growing up that my life was going to turn upside down when I got locked up and charged for murder and left my little mans. I'm outside fighting a war. There's a war going on outside. I'm fighting a war. And if, like, I was a rebel without a cause. Angry. Misguided. And every time a nigga had beef, my number was on speed dial. Niggas used me and abused me. I had guns up under my shirt bigger than my body. Y'all know her song, Campbell. Y'all don't know Poppy. Your friends will have you sitting. Let me tell y'all something, man. When I got extradited from Connecticut... And I got back to New York and I was in those ball pens. The detectives was trying to break me. They had my mother inside the precinct on the opposite side of the cell looking at her son breaking down. My baby mother with my firstborn son on the opposite side of the cage. With them detectives telling me. If I don't cooperate, 
I'm going to do life. But if I cooperate and tell on myself that they'll make sure I only get 20 years. This is why I don't respect the music industry. Oh, you mean the industry, the same industry that we was taught. That is now on the prison system. So these rappers go out of their way. They go out of their way to make music that destroys your mind. Make music that's geared towards you destroying self-destruction. Them niggas had nerve enough to have the 50th anniversary of hip hop. Song Self Destruction. Song Self Destruction. We all agree tonight, all of the speakers have agreed that America has a very serious problem. Not only does America have a very serious problem, but our people have a very serious problem. America's problem is run from a Ku Klux Klan so I shouldn't have to run from a black man. Back in the 60s our brothers and sisters was hanged. How could you gang bang? That song right there never gets old. And anybody that grew up in that era coming from where I'm from you can feel that shit in your soul. Can't be getting things fucked up. The enemy knows. That 
problem with the music today it's geared for you to go to jail it's, it's geared for you to destroy yourself y'all don't feel that the whole song I gotta like I gotta play the whole song if you came from my era you know when this shit came on you was watching video music box as the game starts, but believe me, that is no fun. The time is now to unite everyone. You don't have to be soft to be for peace. Robbing and killing and murdering is the least. You don't have to be chased by the beast. But part of people, it's time I release. Hey, yo, here's the situation. Idiocy, nonsense, violence. Not a good policy. Therefore, we must ignore, fight and fuss it. Heaven's at the door, so there'll be no bum rushing. Let's get together before we're falling apart. I heard a brother shot another, it broke my heart. Love your brother, treat him like a equal. They call him animal. Mm -mm, I don't agree with them. I prove it wrong. The right is what you're proving them. Take keys before I leave to what I'm saying. Or we'll all be on our knees. Praying. Deep in the heart of the matter. The self is. Yo. We will never, ever have another heavy D. All you rappers sound the same, y'all suck. All you rappers, and I hope y'all take it personal because hip hop is dead. We will never have another heavy D because all you niggas want to make music to satisfy the algorithm of evil. Heaven's at the door so there'll be no bum rushing. You had to feel that. Nigga, heavy D said, I'm at the door. There'll be no bum rushing. Y'all don't feel that? Action is served on a planner, making a day, not failing to anticipate. They got greedy, so they fell for the bait. That makes them a victim. Pick and pluck new jacket jazz but did the best they ever got. There's no one around cause in jail, you're a number. They never took the time to wonder about Could you imagine the energy changing in the streets if we made more music like this? Could you imagine the young boys, the young soldiers? We already know you got it in you. We already know that you hit them in the head with the headshot. We know this. I'm not telling you to put yourself, yo, I'm not telling you to put your pistol down. I'm not telling you to do that. I'm telling you to learn when to use it. When to use it. We running outside. Oh, yo, we you on kill mode. Scoring points for the enemy. The nigga you shot hurting just like you. The niggas that shot me. Shot a nigga breaking down on camera. How messed up is your life? That you would actually come outside and shoot a nigga that's breaking down and crying on camera. You see the mindset? What did Jay-Z say? If I shoot you, I'm brainless. But if you shoot me, you famous. 
What's a nigga to do when the streets is watching, waiting for you to break, make your first mistake? Then you take it back, right? To what they don't tell you. Because Jay said, yo, Jay said it. If I shoot you, I'm brainless. You shoot me, you're famous. But Shooter said, I could play this shit all night. Because this is the best shit that I've ever heard come out of this nigga's mouth. And it needed to be said, Shooter. I'm going to tell you like this. I can't afford no slips. I can't afford no slips. I, I just lost my mom. I just buried my mother, man. I lost my emergency contact. I lost that one person I could call up and, and guarantee that she on debt. I don't have that no more. I don't have that luxury. I can't afford jail. I don't have nobody I could call up and, and, and say, yo, hey, hey, bro, hold my bills down for the next year while I'm sitting up fighting this, this, this case. I don't know nobody like that. I don't have that. You know what I'm saying? When you a kid and you going back and forth through trials and tribulations and all that, you ain't leaving nothing behind but your, a, a bedroom in your mother's house. Yeah, that's all you leaving behind. Just all you leaving behind. As an adult, you leaving bills, you leaving your own apartment, you leaving your children. You might come home and your, your mother might be dead, your father might die while you in jail. All sorts of shit. You, I can't afford none of that no more. That part of it is over with. You know what I'm saying? I had, I can't, I had to leave... In order for me to still be here, I had to leave childish behavior in the past. That's done. I can't be making childish decisions. The same decisions and facing the same choices that I faced when I was 16, 17, 18. I'm not facing those choices no more. Nah. Nah, that's not what it is. I can't afford it. So when niggas call me up asking me to do dumb shit or get involved with dumb shit, Somebody out there need to hear that. Don't let these niggas trick you out of your family, shorty. Your wife and your kids is the first line of defense, not your gang, not your set. Anytime you have a child and you, when you see the, yo, that's why I hate these gang niggas. Niggas talk about they set more than they talk about their children. You niggas talk about your set. More than you talk about your children. Who's that up? Who that? Come here for a second. Okay. I don't get it. I don't get how we got so many grown men on social media that keep talking about they said but ain't talking about their children. Keep talking about who's real, who's not. I don't give a fuck about who's real. It doesn't matter. Your realness doesn't pay my bills, my nigga. Your realness is not doing nothing for the black community. You're not paving the way for nothing but ill, for, for, for ignorance. Your realness ain't pay, paving the way for the future of somebody. You niggas won't even plant seeds. So these young boys can grow. Hey, what's up, Haas? Mad love from Toledo, Ohio. Keep applying the pressure. Thank you, family. Thank you for sponsoring this wall. Appreciate you. Red, whatever your name is. Uh, you can call me a hypocrite all you want to, but see, when you look at me and you listen to my message, the first video that starts my shit most of the time, no time for sleeping, the enemy creeping, and we can't defeat him. He a field nigga. He a house nigga. Me, I'm a runaway slave. When you call me, because if you calling me a hypocrite, see, you got to understand, in this house right now, I have multiple children in here. 
And in this house right now, I spend and dedicate the majority of my time in this house. Things I miss at home. Home is where the heart is, baby. Home with my children, my nigga. You know, remember they was calling me the nigga. I'm, I'm the nigga that don't go outside. Remember that, right? And when I started going outside, I thought I couldn't. Because I'm always home. You know, home is where the heart is. Things I miss at home. Louis G, thank you for sponsoring this war. Appreciate you. Everybody has sinned, but everybody is not a hypocrite. Yes, there's a difference. We fall down, but we get back up. I'm not saying that I'm not that I'm that I'm perfect. I'm not even telling you niggas not to get busy if you have to. I'm not never telling you. We are we are POWs, prisoners of war. We're not slaves. We are captives. We have been captured. They released us off the plantation, led us onto a bigger plantation, and now when you work, they give you a percentage that you can live, and then they come get you when you don't pay your taxes. Y'all don't see what Takashi 69 is going through right now? How they got niggas showing that nigga cars when they went to his house while he wasn't there and took his cars? And nine times out of ten, if he got jewelry in the house, they took the jewelry, and they probably, because he ain't pay his taxes. He's a field nigga. He's a house nigga. Me, I'm a runaway slave. I come with a message, my nigga. I live for this shit. Shout out to Shooter. For saying some real shit. We ain't gotta be friends. Y'all niggas ain't gotta like me. But I'm not gonna take my foot off the neck of the niggas in the industry. And I don't care about none of you rappers that talk shit about me, that don't like me, because y'all open an axe. And this right here, I'm not talking to Shooter. I'm talking to the rappers that know me, that don't like me, that can't wait to be somebody else's opening act. My nigga, I'm not an opening. I am the main event on my shit. I will never be somebody else's opening act. Never. I'd rather start from the bottom than to beg somebody to get into this dick-sucking industry. How's Israel just attacked Iran, Syria, and um, Iraq? Wow. Wow. So you basically telling me World War III just started. But we're going to get to that. I always tell them I'm not hating on you. Nobody's coming to watch you in the future. All right. And the scary part, they don't understand that when they hear it, that means that you see how we can rock or the people from the 70s and 60s. Mick Jagger is 136 years old. This is still... <laughs> you know what I mean? Mick Jagger is 140. Right. He's going to perform in the Cascade. 140 million dollars when you step on, the, right. on that stage right. for that year of that tour. Right. Meaning that he made records that's going to always be able to people for this show up. Right. So when, when this era has to go to work, how we can go to work if you want to go to work, you can go get some money, yep. whatever they can't. Because right. when I when that new when they um us it. get 40 and they're gonna be talking about dick fuck suck pussy, whatever, it won't match. Right, right. It won't match. There's no longevity part. in that, right? It won't match. No you hear what Eric Sherman from EPMD saying? Y'all music sucks. Y'all not making timeless music. And some of you rappers, y'all need to hear that. You niggas is going into the studio, in the recording studio, you making songs talking about busting your gun. You're 30 and up. Every song is the same shit. 
We didn't grow up and yo. We grew up where everybody in the industry was different. There were so many different personalities in the music industry. Oh baby, I like it raw. ODB. There was nobody else on Wu Tang like ODB. Everybody was different. Oh baby, I like it raw. But all of you niggas today, y'all sound the same. I come from an era of classic music. You niggas today, y'all suck. I don't even listen to music no more unless I'm driving it. Sometimes I don't even do that because the shit sounds the same. How many times you gonna bust your gun? How many? I can't even feel you niggas music. My era of music, even when niggas was talking they shit, you could feel they songs. This era right here is disgusting. My era, going back to Big, going back to Pac, if Big and Pac is still, was still alive, you niggas, I mean, the industry was still the same. It was still the same. We seen Pac in the tub, butt naked with a gay photographer, taking pictures of him with jewelry on. It was the same homos running the industry. We seen Biggie laying in the bed and, juice, and juicy, and they act, the, the big fat nigga was in the bed with a tranny. We seen that. So we know behind the scenes that there was a price and it was a cost to getting into this music industry. But the music was classic. The music was classic. Look at the shit we got to listen to today. You niggas don't even want to be ourselves. When was the last time y'all heard an album where every song was a different song? Like Nas, Illmatic, it ain't hard to tell. Represent, re represent, straight up shit is real when any day could be your last in the jungle. Get murdered on a humble cause the blast niggas tumble. The corners is the hot spots filled with mad criminals who don't care guzzle a bear. We all stare at the out of towners. They better break off before we get the four pounders. Music don't sound the same no more. It don't. We grew up on party music. Yo, what's up, brother Haas? Like I told you on Instagram, I watch all your lives. We need we need you. Thank you for all you do. Thank you, family. Appreciate you. It ain't just drill rap, man. Cancel all these old ass rappers. When you listen to what Shooter just said, when you listen to what he just said, the man told you, I can't afford to go back to jail. I put my childish, my childish shit away. So if that's the case, if niggas know that they don't want to go to jail, why so many of these old ass men, that old rappers in their 40 Keep talking about shit that they not trying to live. Why they keep selling a 40-year-old ass to our 18-year-old sons? Where's Rock Kim at? What would Rock Kim be talking about if he was rhyming today? What would KRS One be talking about if he was rhyming today? What would Coogee Rap be talking about? These niggas is not rapping no more because they go if they do. No, let me take that back. They're doing shows with classical music that never dies. You niggas is making music that die in a week. And if y'all niggas want somebody to believe everything is gangster about you. And if everything really, really is gangster about you, then you have no balance in your life. 
Because gangsters have money and you niggas is clearly broke. You're broke and evil. You're only tough with black people. Make it safe for black people to come outside in the hood. Stop telling other black people that they can't come through your hood. But you forgot that you on stolen land and you stolen property? A slave dissing another slave? Are you not entertained? I want y'all to listen up. This little cupcake right here, this little fruit cake, this little cupcake, he's a YouTuber. He's very, very big, way bigger than me. Listen, this is the, this is the one that um, Charleston White had introduced him to the transgenders. Listen to what he's saying. I'm basically being ran like Britney Spears, you understand? I'm being controlled. I am not in control anymore. I am being controlled. I'm a puppet and I'm living a puppet. So now I'm on my own and I have to, be, I mean, I'm out and I'm being controlled. I'm being literally on puppet strings. So basically I'm getting told like a dog to do X, Y, and Z. Who's controlling him? Who's controlling him? I'm basically being ran like Britney Spears. Do you understand? I'm being controlled. I am not in control anymore. I am being controlled. I'm a puppet and I'm living a puppet. So now I'm on my own and I have to, be, I mean, I'm out and I'm being controlled. I'm being literally on puppet strings. So basically I'm getting told like a dog to do X, Y, and Z. He's being told like a dog to do X, Y, and Z. I didn't sign no contracts. I didn't go through no doors. I say what the fuck I want to say. I didn't take no oath. The only oath I took is with God. Oh, and that's right. See, the industry God and your God is different gods. I know my friend to you. That's why I never went in the room. They said, Luke, come on in the room. Luke, can you, that's why, Luke, you want to come in the room with us? No! I take my little chips, I'm good. Because I know once you, go in, once you go in that door, it ain't no coming back no more. So I take my little chips, you know, they look at me, I sleep in one bed, I have a nice big goose, and you know, I'm good, my son is good, and that, I don't need that smoke. They already drugged me one time. So when you go up in the room, now you don't know where you're going at. Hold up. Hold up. He look, we look, bring it back. Come re rewind. They already drugged me one time. Did y'all hear that? All in. Shout out to you, family. Hi, hi's family. Please hit hit and like and share. Make sure uh, all in. Make sure you um hit me up in my DM too. What does he mean? They already got him. Are we going back to that math Hoffa in interview? Are we talking about that math Hoffa? In uh, oh man, <laughs> hold up. Everybody from the country. That's why I never went in the room. They said, Luke, come on in the room. Luke, that's why. Luke, you want to come in the room with us? No! I take my little chips, I'm good. Because I know once you go in, once you go in that door, it ain't no coming back no more. So I take my little chips, you know, they look at me, I sleep in one bed, I have a nice big goose, and you know, I'm good, my son is good, and that, I don't need that smoke. They already drugged me one time. So when you go up in the rooms, now you don't know where you're going at. 
You see these multi there? Some people make you. They feel like they own you. You go run out there. These fools go run out there and try to fight these people. You can't fight these people. They own the president. They control the media. Hey, look, you're on the front row at the Oscars. You're on the front row at the Emmys. They promote you. They, they put you on this pedestal and feed you to the people. They give you 50 million followers on social media. They give you that. They put you. They put you on that platform. They make you. They can, and, and just to show they can make you, they can erase you. When you get out of hand, I'm giving y'all some good stuff. This is next. You can't get out of control. Now you get back beside yourself. You know, like Mama said, don't get beside yourself. Don't put that little switch on you, boy. <laughs> you can't get beside yourself. With it's crazy how. Y'all hear me talking about just the, the last live I did, how mama used to send you outside to get that switch and whipped your ass and with they stitch it. But no, let's not get off the message. So who was the day that Luke is talking about? Oh, this is Uncle Luke here. One of the biggest, uh, the biggest artists out of Miami ever. Don't stop. Pop that pussy. Huh? Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Y'all don't know who this is? See, if you come from my era, I'm going to act up this light. I know I'm a, this live, I'm going to act up. That's why I'm telling y'all, if y'all support me, man, I don't care if you got a dollar, put it in the super chat or put it in my cash app. Dollar sign Hassan Campbell. I'm going to need security because I'm going to turn up. Hassan Campbell is going to be World War Three on this internet. And y'all got to support me. Point blank, period. Luke Doodle Brown. Blue Doodle Brown. Don't stop. Pop that pussy. Let me see your Doodle Brown. <laughs> Y'all know about Luke? Y'all make music like this no more. No more. This shit is different. How old is this song? About 25 years? Maybe 30 years? Y'all niggas ain't making music like this. This is a song that lasts forever. When you go up in the club and this shit come on, you're dancing. You have no choice but to get off the wall or you're going to play the wall like we used to do back in the days. And you're going to do the lean back while Shorty throwing her ass all on you. Doodle Brown, Doodle Brown. Yeah. That's Uncle Luke. Y'all don't hear what he's saying? I told y'all I'm the best of the best at this shit. I know they sitting behind the scenes at YouTube like, yo, this nigga right here? <sighs> this nigga right here? Did you hear what Luke said? The message never get old because the evil behind the scenes never change. I see how's on live. I'm clicking. I'm watching. Uncle Luke, tell him again. Let me my friend come to you. That's why I never went in the room. They say, Luke, come on in the room. Luke, can you, that's what, Luke you want to come in the room with us? No. I take my little chips. I'm good. Because I know once you go in, once you go in that door, 
It ain't no coming back no more. So I take my little chips, you know, they look at me, I sleep in one bed, I have a nice big goose, and you know, I'm good, my son is good, and I don't need that smoke. They already drugged me one time. So when you go up in the rooms, now you don't know where you're going at. You see these one time they there, them people make you, they feel like they own you. You go run out there, these fools go run out there and try to fight these people. You can't fight these people. They own the president. They control the media. Hey, look, you on the front row at the Oscars. You on the front row at the Emmys. <laughs> Who's the they? They control the president. They, this nigga's telling you. He's rich. He's telling you who controls him. What part y'all missing? What part y'all don't understand? Like, <laughs> voting for the president it's one of the biggest Jedi mind tricks that they ever played on us. You think we voted Trump in? They selected him. And if he wins again, it won't be by the ballot. It will be because they selected him again. And if they select him to put him back in office again, then you better understand you're going to see a side of him that we didn't see before. Because shit is going to get real on this battlefield called Earth. They promote you. They, they put you on this pedestal and feed you to the people. They give you 50 million followers on social media. They give you that. They put you, they put you on that platform. They make you. They, and, and just they give you. Huh? The 50 million followers. You don't earn that shit. And when you on here. I should have been at a million subscribers already. Fuck 500,000. At a million. They're not letting me. He's telling you how this shit run. And he's talking about social media. Are you listening? Oh, they can make you, they can erase you. When you get out of hand, I'm getting you off some good stuff. This is. They'll make you and they, are, will, they will erase you. They just showed you over and over again. They give certain, like, listen, Master P, done. Out of here. Cash Money, done. Out of here. Bad Boy Records, done. Out of here. Death Row Records, done. Out of here. Rough Riders, done. Out what point y'all don't understand? They give you 15 minutes of fame, and then it's over. Over? Over. You can't get out of control now. You get back beside yourself. You know, like mama said, don't get beside yourself. I'm gonna put that little switch on you, boy. <laughs> you can't get beside yourself with the That's why niggas like this. That's why this nigga right here, he kills me. Everybody in this in this business was, was going to Diddy parties. We just was at a Diddy party at the net. That shit was crazy. Now all, of a, now all of a sudden, now all of a sudden nobody talking about oh going to Diddy party. What like you ever been invited to a party or any party? Right. Every top chick with that was from the city or Philly or everywhere was there. Like I mean, it was a party. I think y'all y'all reaching with some of this y'all talking about. It'd be the be so delusional and never been invited to no party, never had access to no party, running around talking about don't let me find a picture of you in a Diddy party. Shut the shut up. Not gonna lie to you. It's fun. It Listen, Diddy had a party at the Ned recently, like a couple of months ago when they dropped that album. That was a good party. I don't know what you I don't know what you're talking about. Well, if Homeland Security is reaching, like y'all just go for anything, but listen. 
sit back and watch what happens then. That's all I can tell you. I ain't here to say what I'm not here to go one way or another or another. You talking about parties that y'all over here talking about parties and events that y'all never was invited in. Y'all never had access to. Y'all never been involved. You sitting around in your house or in your basement or in your mom's basement or at work judging that you ain't never gonna be in the, in, the, in the company of. What we really talking about? You throwing stones and sitting in houses that's easily to be broken. But what? But we? Who you just? What? Who are we talking about? Hey, 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 hey. Let me see. I'm looking for something, something just ain't right. They sacrificed some dick and they, they said, nigga, you gotta take this shit because we ain't we 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 can't be involved. But Diddy's smart. He filmed every fuck session. So he was fucking Clive and the motherfucking and freak boy that run uh Universal Music Group. So he got them on some fuck tapes. Now that's why they raided the house because they got friends in Homeland Security and the feds. And they said, get, get in there and get them tapes from this nigga. He trying to blackmail us. That's what I believe is going on. Damn, I had something that I wanted to play for y'all. And it's on my other device. Shit. I had something that I really, really wanted to play for y'all. We already know what time it is with Diddy, man. It's clear as day. Hey, 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 big man. Hey, hey, yo, stop talking about. Hey, listen, Brooklyn in here, you hear me? Oh, New York. Brooklyn, Brooklyn, baby. So please get the money. Please get the money. New York, nigga. No Diddy. No Diddy. No Diddy, nigga. No Diddy, nigga. Yo, Diddy, nigga. Yo, Diddy, nigga. Yo, Diddy, nigga. Oh, my God. You pick the side, self. Now stay here. Hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> you see my niggas, you see my niggas tripping, you see my niggas tripping, you see it, 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 yeah nigga, yeah nigga. <laughs> <laughs> the nigga said pick a side, no diddy. Damn, there's something that I, I might have to do part two for y'all. There's something. Let me see something. Yeah, sorry about that, people. Let me see. Cat Williams. He recently pulled a Jaguar right and was just <laughs> doing a lot of truth telling. Want to know what's interesting? Go ahead. It's Cat Williams that taught me how to be Jaguar right. Oh, wow. Okay. What was it about him that you, you kind of say, ooh? He was my 30th birthday present. <laughs> I'll never forget when he walked into the club mm -hmm. and I was sitting at my table. It's my birthday party. And he wanted to meet me. And he came to my party. He gave me about 20 grand in cash and said, consider it a down payment on your time. He taught me so much in nine months. Walking away was hard. But it was when the Illuminati first started coming after him. And I left. You know, back in that moment, 
cat was still wearing Kevlar to bed. To bed. I would get in bed with him at night and he would have Kevlar on. In bed. Mm. Mm. He said he got arrested over 30 times. No no convictions. I'm getting close. (laughs) Go ahead. But it's been about 30 for him. It's been eight for me. He beat felony. I beat felony. Who's the they? Because I'm getting confused. Because on one side, you have these punk ass celebrities telling you that there is no Illuminati. But then on the other hand, you got Cat Williams. You got Jaguar, right? Who is the they? That got her locked up eight times. Who's the day that got Cat Williams locked up 30 times? Where he's going to sleep with bulletproof vests on. Who's the they? Were you listening to what she said? She said so much shit was going on with him. She left him. She wasn't even trying to stick around for his heat. Who was she? She is the member of one of the biggest groups ever, The Roots. Who part you don't understand? Some people dedicate their life to speaking against evil. There's some people get caught up in this industry. And when you get caught up. We ain't with none of that Illuminati shit. We ain't on none of that. Oh, uh, little baby, you know, where all the gay ass shit going on. We ain't on none of that pensioner shit. We ain't on none of that fuck shit. Don't never play with a nigga with no gay shit, no snitch shit, no fuck shit, no salt shit. No, no, none of that shit. We ain't on none of that. Stop playing with you. For real. Bitch, it's cold out here. <laughs> what is Kodak Black talking about? He didn't say they don't exist. He said I ain't with it. Even though we all know that in order, see, you they'll, they'll let you get to a certain plateau, but then to keep going forward. This nigga right here had the president, Donald Trump, exonerated him out of a rape case. We ain't with none of that Illuminati shit. We ain't on none of that. Oh, uh, little baby, you know, where all the gay ass shit going on. We ain't on none of that pinch nail shit. We ain't on none of that fuck shit. No, never play with a nigga with no gay shit, no snitch shit, no fuck shit, no salt shit. No, no, none of that shit. We ain't on none of that. Stop playing with you. For real, bitch. It's cold out here. <laughs> Do I got to play the, the audio of NBA Young Boy? Talk about he sold his soul. Let me see if this shit pop up. NBA young boy, when he talks about selling his soul. Peace and blessings. Welcome to another episode of Ezekiel Mason Explains. I'm your host, Ezekiel Mason. Today I will be discussing NBA young boy and the guilt and shame that he feels now that he realized he sold his soul for money and fame. NBA young boy, also known as Kentrell Deshaun Galden, is a mega star in the rap game today. He is one of Universal Music Group's premier artists, and as you see, Universal. Let me say this: I didn't see this video, so I'm gonna try to skip to the point. See if he got what I'm talking about, cause um, I don't want to listen to all his shit and his narratives. There's a video with NBA YoungBoy, which I showed y'all before. Is talking about selling his soul.
Matter of fact, let me let it play. Let me see what he's talking about. Like Taylor Swift. Last year, he reportedly signed a $60 million record deal. You might think this is when he sold his soul for that deal. And it could be. $60 million when music is not selling. He had a $60 million, if, if that's true, because I didn't do my homework. I didn't fact check this. But if he got a $60 million deal when music is not selling... What exactly are they trying to get him to sell to our children? The fact that he's a fucking junkie? But I believe he sold his soul long before this. The 23-year-old artist has been in the game since he was 16. I paused this video so you can see the Masonic emblem he has around his neck. You see clearly that NBA young boy is a Mason. Either he was recruited very young or he's older than they are telling us. Both are possible. Here's a clearer shot of him proudly displaying the Masonic Square and Compass. Here young boy is posing with civil rights attorney Greg Crump and another gentleman doing a Masonic hand gesture. They are all wearing full Masonic dress. When you see artists doing this sign, that is not a gun symbol. That is a Masonic symbol. It is the sign of a Mark Master. This is the fourth degree of masonry. The celebrities put these symbols up to show you what level of masonry they are on. NBA Youngboy has had multiple run-ins with authority, going back as far as high school when he was arrested for robbery and spent six months in a juvenile detention center. I found an incident where he was arrested in Atlanta. It has police body cam footage that I'm going to show you now. Sensitive viewers might want to look away. Need you to step outside. It's right here. Nah, get my baby. Understand what she doing? She slapped somebody. Man, the girl came at me. I'm good. What girl? Let me get my hand. Let me get my hand. Now. Relax your arms. Hey, look. Don't touch the light. Why be you around the camera? Man, I'll touch you. citizen might have gotten hurt in march of 21 never broke again young boy was arrested by lapd after an actual car chase what would make a guy who literally has billions of streams flee from police they literally had to send canine units in to get him to come out and surrender he had an outstanding warrant for weapons and drug charges in Louisiana, but I don't think that's why he ran. Young boy is a Mason. And of course, with his deep Masonic connections, he beat all of his cases. He was connected, released from jail, and went on with his life, but he wasn't the same. There was just something different about him. NBA young boy pushes a very negative agenda his music and his behavior desensitizes youngsters to violence, drugs, and many other horrible activities. He's even been known to taunt other rappers that lost their lives in his music. How many youngsters do you think heard NBA Youngboy's songs and tried to emulate his style? After his release from jail, everything changed. He started wearing makeup and doing very strange things I'll let him explain. I like, I like, I like, I like, I like doing my face. I like, I like, I like painting my face or putting makeup on. I like, I don't know. I like just look in the mirror and see everything in black. Like my eyes and shit. Ooh. Yeah, it gave me like the golf feeling. Like, you know, like rock stars and shit. I don't know. But as I've been doing it, it makes me, comfort it makes me feel more comfortable. I don't know. I think they did something to NBA Youngboy. 
but he did sign up for this life. For you youngsters that look up to him, I want you to pay attention to what he says in this interview. Man, I was flooded with millions of dollars from the time I was 16 all the way to this point in my life. And I woke up one morning, I was like, damn, they got me. Man, look at the shit I spoke about. Look at the shit I put in these people ears. Man, I feel very wrong about a lot of things. How many lives I actually am responsible for when it comes to my music? How many kids and people have gotten in the car or put this shit in their ears and actually hurt someone? And now I'm sitting back like, damn, I can't do it all in one day. But I promise to clean whatever I can clean. But it's going to take time. Ooh. Did y'all hear what he just said? He just told you that his music is destroying the kids that he promised that he gonna try to make it right, but it's going to take time. But the crazy part about it is he beat all these cases, but they had the little nigga on house arrest for years. And now he's going to jail for a drug case. When you in that system and you got them handcuffs placed on you, they could do anything to you. MK Ultra, anything. We already seen Kanye spaced out, walking around with blonde hair, couldn't answer no questions. Wow. Everybody's not satisfied with selling a soul. Everybody's not satisfied with destroying the black community. I mean, come on, man. We sat back and watched Chris Tucker at the height of his career blow it. No, not Chris Tucker. Um, Yeah, Chris Tucker. What made him run? And when he ran, why did they label him, label him as being crazy? Y'all better be, it's like they say, be careful what you ask for. You just, you just might get it. Be careful of what you ask for. This industry is evil. This message ain't gonna never get old. Shout out to the 5,000 people in the building. There are five people. They're scared of people. Like all my kids. I'm terrified of people. And I'm very shy. But I never know why once I walk on the stage. They got to this character very young. That interview gave me XXX Tentacion vibes. He gave a similar interview right before he was removed from the world stage. For more videos, please visit my YouTube channel at Ezekiel.
one second, people. Okay, we back, we back, we back. You know what? It's too much to go on with NBA Young Boy. It's 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 really too much. It's it's like the biggest weapon that they use against us is us being poor. Every man wants to be able to feed his family. Every man wants to be able to pay his bills. Nobody in their right fucking mind wants to live in poverty. Nobody in their right mind wants to live in the hood. Nobody. Absolutely nobody. So stop letting these niggas sell you the hood. But there's a price that comes with your fame. You're going to pay that price. Ain't no getting around it. Ain't no getting around that shit. There's a lot of stuff going on that the industry is being exposed. What you do with the information is on you. How you carry the information is on you. Damn, my glasses are so foggy. Daryl Jones. I mean, Darrell Jones, thank you, family. Appreciate you. Lex, thank you. Appreciate you. It's people out here that don't want to leave the hood. You know why they don't want to leave the hood? Because when you leave the hood, it's not easy to manipulate people that live outside the hood. They're not buying your bullshit. You can't come. In my neighborhood that I'm living in right now, on my block, and pull that shit that niggas is doing in the hood, you can't do that here. Because even the people that might use drugs, if you open up shop here, they're going to call the police on you. Because even though they might indulge, they don't want that shit in their fucking neighborhood. So the niggas that's into that shit, they're going to keep selling you that shit. Because they feel special. Like when Jim Jones and Mano pull up in their driveways, they're not talking that bullshit, shenanigans shit that they be talking to their neighbors in their neighborhood. They howdy. How you doing? How was your day? When they get on TV, when they get in the hood, they real niggas. When they get around those crackers, that's not the face that they showing those crackers. They showing your kids a different face from what they showing those white kids. That's why I don't like them niggas. They showing your children, they raising your children different from the way they raising them other people's children. That's why I don't like them. Two twenty for the two twenty club. Well, man, now they're trying to turn every little black girl in America into a whore. Now they're trying to turn every little black girl in America. Into a little whore. You got people out there. That's like back in the days. Dolores Tucker. 
Tupac dissed her, but the truth of the matter is, she was right. A lot of this music should have been thrown in the trash a long time ago. She was right. She, <coughs> she could foresee the future of where this shit was going. She was right. Look at the music now. See, it was like, all right, it was cool. You had little Kim Foxy Brown. But you also had Lauren Hill. Shit was balanced out. If you had NWA back in the days, you had Public Enemy. This shit was balanced out. We'd be lucky if we ever get a Lauren Hill again. I was asking for the cash app. My cash app is um, Dollar Sign Hassan Campbell. Thank you, family. Appreciate you. Yeah, I listened to Prince. I listened to Michael Jackson, too. Who the fuck didn't listen to Prince? Who didn't listen to Prince? They don't make. We don't get music like that no more. What the fuck is you talking about? I listen to Prince. talking about you ain't hear the message in that k love thank you family appreciate you you ain't hear the message in that what you you can't feel that and you can say whatever you want to say about prince and his little fruity ass but prince had the baddest bitches ever Ever, ever, forever? Ever. Apollonia? Vanity? Hold up. Y'all niggas ain't never had pictures of vanity. What? What? Stop playing. Matter of fact,
Keep preaching, brother. And I like Little Red Corvette. Nigga, I like all that. Little Red Corvette. What? Teach me some moves. Hold up, hold up. Oh, my God. Look at my baby. Look at my baby. Oh, my goodness. Mm. Woo. Yeah, I had just I had to just block this little asshole because I don't even know how my mods let the nigga get past. See, certain certain people I'm not gonna play with. Nigga, put in my comment section, play Africa Bambada. Like, what you trying to be funny? I bet you won't get a chance to get that comment through again. Bye bye, buck out. Hit him in the head. Hit him in the head with the the headshot. The head the headshot. Chass up out of here. Yeah. Y'all don't even understand. Prince and Michael Jackson was two of the baddest motherfuckers that walked this earth. That's where you get the weekend from. That's where you get the weekend from. That's why the weekend was one of my favorite artists. piece of real music it's over it's over rest in peace the real music oh the copyright's gonna get me I'm like fuck it tonight shout out to Lord I Kim let me rap too the copyright's gonna be crazy tonight but you know what I made some sacrifices tonight. We don't hit the like button. That gonna tell me. See, I can understand what some people say. I gotta like what you done gave forth. Y'all don't like what I gave y'all tonight. Why? Why you not hitting the like button? We got forty six hundred people in the building. This should be forty six hundred likes. Yeah, there's still real music out there, but we shouldn't have to find it. We shouldn't have to search for it. The fuck we got DJs for? Why the fuck do we keep supporting these DJs on these platforms if we're not going to get real music? You play Michael Jackson, it's a rap for the live. Yeah, when I play Michael Jackson, I don't know what it is about Michael Jackson but Michael Jackson's music is banned in mad different countries. I don't know what it is, but yeah. Yeah. They get stupid on Michael. Michael. Huh?
are monitoring breaking news in Iran. For more, we're going to be joined now by NBC News, Pentagon, and national security correspondent, Courtney Cuby. Courtney, what do we have? So, Lawrence, there has been some breaking news all this evening that we've been trying to get more detail on. Here's what we know so far. According to Iran's semi-official state media, that's FARS, they are saying that there have been a series of explosions in Iran, in a city called Isfahan. Now, why a lot of our viewers may have heard of that city is because it's where some of Iran's critical nuclear infrastructure exists. But so far, it seems that these explosions are not specifically in Isfahan, where the nuclear facility is, but are nearby. Now, the U.S. U.S. officials are not saying anything about this. Neither are Israeli officials. But of course, this all comes when there has been this back and forth between Iran and Israel and threats for both from both sides. Now, of course, on April 1st, the Israeli military struck a site in Damascus, which was later determined to be some sort of a consular site killing a number of senior Iranian officials, including a general, a senior general in the Iranian Revolutionary Guard. But we all, of course, we know, Lawrence, that last weekend, Iran retaliated with pretty great force, about 300 projectiles, missiles, and drones, most of which were shot down. But Israel again vowed to respond. Now, among the possible response options that we have been hearing about this week, that Israel briefed the U.S. on ahead of the strikes last weekend was the possibility of some sort of a response inside Iran, but also the possibility of strikes against proxy forces and, and against Iranian uh, facilities outside of Iran. There are also some reports. See, I caught that comment where Queen AH4 so tired of this. The thing about it is, what you have to understand is, is that it what scares me. You know what I'm afraid of? I'm afraid of when you get that letter in the mail or when the military starts knocking at your door and they're telling you that your sons and your daughters are being drafted. Because we are on the break of World War III. And all of these quote unquote real niggas that want you to believe that they was the illest nigga, the illest killer in Nebraska, they not, they too old. The military don't want them old washed up niggas. They're coming for your children. It's inevitable. And who children you think is gonna be on the front line? yours it's coming world war three is going to be the biggest war that we know of because the people in power they've been in power and they repetitive with their jedi mind tricks they're repetitive with their tactics on how they keep Reducing the world's population because these people that's in power, they've been in power since the beginning of time. Evil never takes a day off. This world is a prison for us righteous men and women who have become sinners. They use everything in the industry to turn you into a real nigga or a bad bitch. They use everything in the industry to make you go against your righteous state. When you watch movies like karate flicks and you watch the Buddha, like the, the, the Shaolin Temple, they are teaching you to be at your highest elevated point. Of righteousness. What do they show you in karate flicks? Training. Guiding. Ex exercise. Discipline. When you watch the movie The Last Dragon. Vanity. Leroy. The 
The Last Dragon when Bruce Leroy gets his glow. The Last Dragon with Bruce Leroy gets his glow. One of my top five movies. Yeah. Y'all can't tell me y'all not feeling highs tonight, man. Come on, man. And I got mad copyrights tonight. Y'all better hit the like button. Stop playing, man. The Last Dragon is a classic movie. And you know what I love about The Last Dragon? It ain't like that nigga shit that they sell you in a nigga section on Tubi TV. I can't stand that shit on Tubi TV. Pure ignorance. When you coming to Minnesota, I don't know. I've never been to Minnesota. I need, I need to go out there. Good quality meat. Like, come on, man. That's one of the best black movies ever. That shit was dope. Because you know why? Bruce Leroy was a cornball. He was a cornball. He's, he's what you could... Yo, the nigga is what they call today a goofy. He was a goofy. He's a goofy. But you know what, though? He was a fucking real man. In today's time, being a real man, see that title right there, it doesn't exist anymore. Being a real man doesn't exist anymore. Oh, he's a real one. What the fuck is a real one? Y'all niggas ain't never seen a real one a day in your life. All you seen was misguided Misled, ignorant niggas killing other ignorant niggas. Let's be real. I said this shit before and I'm going to say this shit again. Y'all niggas honor Pistol Pete. He was a child when he got locked up. He was a child with a child's mind. A young man who had his best friend murdered. Because he was fucking his baby mama. David Mullins, a.k.a. Twin, was fucking Pete's girl before Pete fucked her. When Pete went to jail, David started fucking her again. Pete went to jail. He knew it was over for him. He sent a letter home to his best friends ever. And his best friends all went to jail for murdering his right-hand man. Over a bitch. You niggas don't know y'all big homie. He did the foulest shit. He sent a letter. Through the feds. He knew the feds was reading his mail. He sent a letter to his friends. And made them kill their friend. And now forever. He's sitting in a fucking box. In ADX. On punishment. Forever for doing the foulest shit that you could do to your own friends. 
This is what the streets is glorifying. Hello? The nigga in jail because he sent a hit to kill his best friend. His number one shooter. That was his ace boom coon, the nigga he was with every day. Died over a bitch. You niggas don't know your big homie. You never got to know your big homie. And your big homie is still alive. He's a grown man right now. Y'all don't even know if he's the same person. Y'all not following the 50-year-old Pistol Pete? The nigga that's 48 years old right now? You following the 20, 22, 23-year-old version of him? You niggas is glorifying. You got niggas that's 40 years old right now glorifying a 20-year-old mind frame. The nigga was 20 when he did that shit. 21, 22. He was in jail for the rest of his life. Y'all glorifying a nigga that did that shit over 25 years ago. You niggas is what I call clowns. And then the shit that killed me about you niggas, right? The shit that kills me about you niggas? When a nigga like BMO, shout out to BMO, come home from jail? All of y'all want to meet and greet this nigga when he come home from jail. Was y'all going to see BMO when he was in jail? That's the, anybody, if y'all ever get an interview with BMO, the one question I want y'all to ask BMO is when he was in jail, doing 20 years in jail, all these niggas that came to meet up with him when he came home, where the fuck was they at when he was in jail struggling? Did these niggas help his mother? Why he was in jail? No. Did they look out for his kids? His baby mother? Why he was in jail? No. But as soon as a real nigga come home from jail, whatever the fuck that is, then the, the, then the first thing they want to do is take pictures with you. Hang out with you. I want to be down with what you go. You groupy ass niggas. I hate niggas like you. Since we playing music. Brandy, I want to be down. Brandy, I want to be down. Music. The 90s. Listen, man, in my description on my YouTube is my own. The fuck is that shit that app again? Um, damn, I'm bugging my own. I forgot that goddamn app. Like, yo, my brain is fried right now. What's that app I told you to follow me on again? Somebody talk to me in the comment section. Yo, my brain is fried. What the hell is that app again? When I start doing my own, my lives where I can actually play Bigo, Bigo, my Bigo shit, make sure y'all definitely follow me on Rumble too, but um, 
when I start going live on Beagle, my shit's going to be ill. Because I don't have to worry about the copyrights. And I can actually sit up there and incorporate my music. The 90s. You rappers, y'all suck. You rappers, and I'm challenging y'all to step y'all shit up and come with better music. Come with better music. Niggas from my era were storytellers. The 90s music is very, very undefeated. The 80s too, though. The 80s was... Listen, the 80s was crazy. The 90s was crazy. The early 2000s was crazy. After 50 Cent, shit just started going down. I don't know, man. Y'all got me getting... I might be in trouble tonight playing all this shit that I played on YouTube. <laughs> I might be in trouble. Now, let me tell y'all something, right? I ran. Sent 300 missiles. Over. To Israel. Israel has something called the Iron Wall. It's a defense system that's supposed to basically protect them. From missiles. Now. Iran missiles broke through that iron wall and touched Israel. Now tonight, while we live, Israel gave a response. What I want you to understand is the missiles that came from Iran probably cost $10,000 to make. Nothing for Iran to make. The missiles coming from Israel are sponsored and paid for from America. And America is going to charge the American citizens top dollar to replace all those missiles. See, the missiles that was fired from the Iron Wall to shoot down Iranian missiles, those missiles are going to, that, 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 it's going to cost more money. For Israel to shoot down the missiles that Iran is sending, then it's going to cost for Iran to send those missiles. Who you think is going to pay for that? You, soldier boy. We paying for that. Stay amazing, hood hero from Aliyah R R in damn H R N. Thank you, family, for sponsoring this war with your pretty self. I love having pretty girls in my comment section. Huh? Is that why niggas be hating me? Is that why? Because I be having all the pretty girls over here. Huh? Pretty girls rock, rock, rock. And good evening, I'm Trace Gallagher. It's 10 p.m. on the East Coast, 7 o'clock here in Los Angeles. And this is a breaking news edition of Fox News at Night. There are reports coming in that Israel has now begun its highly anticipated retaliatory strikes against Iran. Now, we are tracking these developments and we are hearing that explosions have been heard over Iran proper, as well as in southern Syria, and explosions heard above Iraq. We do not know if any areas of Iraq were hit. We think there were some explosions in southern Syria, and there are reports 
of possibility of strikes in southern Iran near the Natanz and the Forto nuclear facilities. Remember, these are the facilities that that are said to be places that you can produce nuclear weapons. They also have a uranium. So if you listen to him, he's basically telling you it came close, but no cigars. So these sophisticated missiles that's supposed to be coming from Israel hit close to the area, but didn't miss, but didn't hit their mark. Came close. But Iranian missiles hit every mark and every target that they was trying. It took the missiles six hours to get to their location in Israel. And it hit every mark that they wanted to hit. Through the iron, the iron dome or iron wall that they have. But he's telling you that American missiles that comes from America that Israel have came close to hitting the targets? Yeah, all right. Y'all better pay attention to World War III. Version facility in Isfahan. And this is also in southern Iran, and there are reports that there have been airstrikes in that area as well. Let's get live on the ground now to Tel Aviv. That's where Trey Yinks joins us live. Trey, what are you hearing? What are we learning? Yeah, hey, Trace, good evening. Right now we are following reports out of the region of airstrikes taking place in Iran, Iraq, and Syria. The Israelis at this moment have not confirmed that this is the retaliation to that massive Iranian drone and missile attack last weekend. But here's what we know. Some outlets citing American officials. And again, these are preliminary reports based on the information that we are gathering right now. We've reached out to Israeli defense officials and are waiting for comment. Local media is reporting explosions in the Iranian city of Isfahan. Isfahan sits about 200 miles to the south of the Iranian capital of Tehran. At this location, there is an Iranian nuclear facility. There are also reports of activity at other locations across Iran. This is significant because, remember, the initial reporting leading up to tonight had to do with what might be a limited Israeli response to this large-scale attack last weekend conducted by the Iranians. So in terms of the targets that were likely uh, hit in any sort of strike and retaliation from the Israelis, you are looking at nuclear research facilities, additionally any sort of IRGC locations across the Middle East in places like Syria and Iraq, and then Iranian-backed proxies across the region. And so Iran-backed Iraqi and Syrian Shia militias certainly would be on that target list for the Israelis. The Israelis looking to send a message to Iran if this is confirmed that they are behind these strikes, not to ever attack directly from Iranian territory toward Israel, and also to ensure that they will keep control of their proxies across the region. The big concern here has to do with Iranian nuclear aspirations. And I want to break down something very important here, Trace, because if it is confirmed that Isfahan was one of the targets for the Israelis tonight in this retaliation, it is significant for two reasons. We'll point back to June of last year when the UN nuclear watchdog was concerned that they w went into a probe and found uranium particles that were enriched up to 83 percent just short of the 90 percent weapons grade material line an indication that iran is getting very close to the ability to create a nuclear weapon other watchdogs over the past several months so it's safe to say life is like a book It's like reading the Bible, reading the Quran. It's predicting. And sometimes what their media, they're predicting what's happening. So it's safe to say that somewhere down the line, Iran, a place that's very, very close. How close is Iran to building a nuclear missile 
that could crack the earth in half. So when Iran finishes, because they're so close, right? They're so close. In America, in Israel's missiles, rather, missed where their nukes is at or where their nukes is being built. But it came close to hitting. Close, but no cigars. So now, Iran is going to get back. Y'all hear this bullshit? Because all these governments is working together. Even the ones that's beefing with each other. I keep telling y'all, they're not really beefing with each other. They're beefing with us. Their job is to restart and reduce the world's population again. My theory, right? Y'all want to know what my theory is? Is that these wars with these missiles have been going on since the beginning of time. And since the beginning of time, your leaders and this shit that we call life, this fucked up world that we live in, everything is fake. What you read in the book is fake. Your fucking scholars is fake. Your heroes is fake. The wars that they told you about that you read about in books that you cherish it, and the heroes that they gave you is fucking fake. Because if they take you back to Babylon in the beginning of time when we had Nimrod, this structure that we live in, this structure that controls the world started with Nimrod. This technology started with Nimrod, and Nimrod was the first to build the towers of Babel. So with that being said, there's nothing new up under the sun. So when you go in the pyramids, and you look at the hieroglyphs, and you look at the writings on the wall, the walls, the walls, and it shows you all this technology that we have here and pyramids that was made thousands of years ago. It's showing you all the technology that we have here. Now in today's time, put your fucking glasses on. And when you put your glasses on, wipe these shits off. Make sure they're clear. Wipe them off. Put your glasses on so you can see. So after World War III, what is slavery going to start all over again? Are you going to be living in some part of the world where there's no electricity? Where they're going to give you farm animals? Are your children going to end up on a plantation? Because the parents is going to be dead. You're not going to live through World War III. Some of us is in our 40s, 50s, and 60s, even 30s. You're not going to live. The next generation of babies will be on a plantation again. And the crazy part about it is, in the books that's going to be written, are y'all listening to me? Are y'all hearing my theory? Slavery will start all over again. Your children will never know that we had TVs, that we had technologies, that we had cars. They asked us to be riding horses again. Well, not your children, but their children. This ain't the first time this shit happened. They give you some fucked up story about how you came over here in the Nina, the Pinta, the Santa Maria. Bullshit. These are the same tactics being used. How the fuck was the Grand Canyon formed? What produced that big ass fucking hole? And why they don't let you go down there to do research? What the fuck they scared of you finding? Why you can't go to Antarctica? What the fuck is over in the ice that is forbidden for you to go over there to find? Fuck your scholars. Whatever book that you read, whatever scholar that you that you you holding up with these black fuck them, they lying. They gave you your heroes, my nigga. You don't see the movies, even in the book of Eli, 
how they said before the war happened in the book of Eli, they went around and they burned all books. They burnt all the books. They tell you what the fuck they did and what happened in the past through their movies. You ain't no fucking slave. You a POW. Once you get rid of the parents, you can teach the children anything. You don't believe me? Try talking to your children about these fucking celebrities that they worship. Your children love these celebrities. Try telling your child that WrestleMania, that WWF wrestling, WWE, whatever they named it now, is fake. And watch how your children respond. The greatest Jedi mind trick that these fucking devils ever pulled on us was separating the youth from the adults. When you go in the hood and you stand on the block, the young boys is over that way. The old heads is over that way. What the fuck do we do to bring them together? Y'all hit that like button, hit that share button, hit that subscribe button, and pay attention to your circle before they hurt you. I'm out. And if I take this live down, y'all gonna find this live on my Patreon. If y'all wanna find some of the videos that you won't find on YouTube, go over and support me on Patreon.com, Hassan Campbell. It is what it is. Hit him in the head with the headshot.